Good, good. Shabbat shalom. Good to see you too. Good show. Nice to see you again. Sorry, my uh, earbuds. They they were bone bone conduction. They don't okay. go. You can just you can sit here if you want. It's okay. Both parts are approaching the rainbow. I have a pain in my left cheek. Oh geez. Oh yeah. Is that okay? Whatever you want, absolutely. You can see him raised. He mentioned your name. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let's go with motion. He said it was not the first one person. Oh, good. He got a holy certification now. He got a and a test that he's a specialist in veteran repair. Oh, very good. Yeah. Veteran Realty, United Veteran. He can sell really old houses. He well, I'm not kidding. He just sold one last week, and that was brand new. Very nice. Yes, oh, very good. Yeah, very good. There's a lot of people doing that, but they have to sit down. Oh, they can't. It's like this. Yeah, it's the economic climate. But they have, they have the ability to go from zero to two point five. So That's right. Give them our best. Really, such a nice man. Yeah, let him lay off the donuts. What? I don't do these things. I'm I'm not. I'm I'm worried. Yes. Over seven o'clock, Jim is. You got a minute. I got one minute. A minute and fifteen seconds. Six fifty-eight. Oh, it's not the yeah. 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 There was a, um, there was, there was a comic one. I could go with any person. Just so you know which there. What, which one gets kissed and which one goes out for the war? They both know. <laughs> I know. As soon as I said it, I knew it. All right, Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos. The Torah portion is Shalach, which means send. God says to Moses, send the spies out to spy out the land. And it takes them an entire month to spy out the land. Uh, you've got, well, the good thing about Israel is that it's long and pointy. So the top part is the north and the bottom part is the south. It didn't take me long to figure that out. In the meantime, the west is the Mediterranean or the Yam HaTifon, and on the left is Jordan, and we won't talk about that unless you're talking about, about my son. Okay? So we'll be discussing that later on. In the meantime, I have, it's not a humorous anecdote, but it is an anecdote. Somebody doesn't know that my son is Jordan. My son is Jordan. My son is Jordan. Yes, I spoke to him on the way here and he was still joined. Okay, so anyway, Shimon Peres. What happened to Shimon Peres? Here he is. Now, I have to say, over the years, I've been, let him rest in peace. I've been very unfair to Shimon Peres because I was going on the words of the political commentator who said he was sort of the Richard Nixon of, of Israel. But I, I really think over the years, he played a very effective part, starting out with Paul Mach and working for David Ben Gurion and all that good stuff. And eventually became president. Was he president of Israel at one point? You know, the president is a ceremonial office, and all you do is cut the ribbon. Yes. Yes, yes, he was. Yes, he was the head of the Labour Party. Labour Party is the party that barely exists these days. But um, I'm just saying, because in Israel now, I have nothing against Mr. Itamar Ben Gabir, except that he, I don't like him. But uh, he recently, they're trying to pass a law, I don't know if they passed it yet, that anyone can be kept under administrative detention without a trial, 
without habeas corpus, uh, anything like that. And this is a brand new 180 degree turn in the history of Israel. Furthermore, while uh, Mr. Ben Gvir has introduced several uh, controversial bills, this is one that they engineered so that it could not be vetoed by the Attorney General. It's, it's just a very strange time. So I'm going to tell you the story of how Shimon Peres met Anwar Sadat, the late president of Egypt, okay? Um, it was Friday, November 18, 1977. Peres was then head of the Labour Party, but it didn't matter very much because they were out of power ever since uh, Begin took over. And his wife, Sonia, that is Peres and his wife, Sonia, were in the United States on a lecture tour for the United Jewish Appeal. Remember the UJA? Mm -hmm. Yes? That was uh, the people took the money they were going to use for uh, carpeting in the basement, and uh, they gave it to Israel instead. It went to the UJA, okay? Are they still in business, the UJA? They have so much competition. Uh, Paris and Mrs. had just landed in Los Angeles. They were very tired. All Paris wanted to do, and I'm sure everyone here has said this at one point or another, is go to the hotel, get the room, lie down, get some rest. Air Schlucken. Okay. Just as he got off the plane, he was met by Israel's consul general in Los Angeles, who said that Egyptian President Sadat is going to arrive in Israel on Saturday night, I would speak to the Knesset the following day. The consul general said, Mr. Paris, you better return immediately to Israel. Now, the key word here is immediately. In 77, could you immediately return to Israel? He was going to try. He boarded, he waited an hour and boarded a plane to New York, and he figured from there he could get on an Air France jet and go to Tel Aviv. Unfortunately, there was a runway accident at Kennedy Airport, which forced his plane to circle above the airport for three hours. He's nowhere near the Air France, uh, Air France, Air France, Air France flight. Meanwhile, uh, as fate would have it, Golda Meir was on the Air France flight at Kennedy. She requested, as a former head of state, that the plane wait for Paris. It did wait for an hour, and then it left. You see, it doesn't pay to be nice to people. Uh, Paris's family of Paris's plane finally landed, but there were no flights to either Israel or Europe that day. Paris was now certain he would not be in Israel in time for Sadat's historic visit, but he didn't give up. He called an Israeli military delegation then in New York. They checked and discovered that an El Al cargo plane carrying industrial piping was scheduled to depart for Amsterdam at three in the morning. Paris and his wife waited until three in the morning. They did not sleep, and then they got on the plane. Only after they boarded the plane, it was a military plane, and they found out it's a cargo plane. It's not a passenger plane. Did it have any seats? It did not. So the crew was very nice. They spread out blankets, and Paris and his wife lay down on the floor of the fuselage. The plane reached Amsterdam, where Paris and his wife got on a regular El Al flight to Israel. He had already been on his way to Israel for 36 hours, and it wasn't over yet. When he got off the plane at Lund Airport, he found out that they expected him to give a welcoming speech to Sadat. He had to prepare the speech. He thought he needed a quotation from the Quran, so he spoke to Yitzhak Nabon, one of the uh, early Sephardic uh, leaders, and Nabon read over his speech and said, it's all right, you don't need the quote. So... At 6.30 that night, Paris changed his clothing, went to Ben Gurion Airport. Hundreds of security guards and police had cordoned it off. He took his place in the middle of the reception line. Sadat stepped out of the plane at 7.58 p.m. He had some words with Mr. Sadat. He gave his speech. He went home late at night. Although he had remained awake for two days, he was so overwhelmed by Sadat's historic visit that he could not fall asleep. The end. Any questions? What is this on you? Oh no, no. <laughs> this is a this is an anecdote. It's not even humorous. This is historical. This is a you are there sort of thing. Oh, okay. And I understand you knew Paris person. Yes, he went to Bronx Science High School. Okay, along with William Shakespeare and uh, the cast of both. Yeah. 
Yes, Ben Hathaway. Ben Hathaway went through Bronx Science? Of course. Really? No. But he's, he's he from just, Wisconsin. He just said no. <laughs> I am from Wisconsin. Okay. All right. Any questions? Anything about Paris? Well, let's light the candles before we commit any more damage. <laughs> Sherry, would you do the, uh, the honors, please? All things rise. Do where you want to do around the people, just not the same. Okay. Talia, come help my parents. We need the expert. Gotta let go of the whip while you're lighting. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Wave our hands over the candles, cover our eyes with the water. Talking, and then the other side of the the shell of the shell of the shell the all right, we'll continue now. You did Nepesh on page 14, and we'll sing the first two stanzas. Oh, only will I bow. Let your sweet love delight me with its thrill, because no other dainty will my hunger still. Splendid is your life, till you in the world. My soul is weary. The pleasure of your presence, they will He will find strength and healing in your sight. Forever will she serve you. Grateful with all her mind. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I
We continue now on page 15. Thank you for joining us this Shabbat. I did a fast count and we have not 10 but 11 people. So somebody's got to go home. And we have about uh, 10 people on the machine. Five people on the machine. Hello, people on the machine. Uh, right now. Thank you for joining us. Page 15. How old you, Seven. Seven. Ooh, almost more than halfway to Bach next time. Here we go. Okay. Oh, you're not your traditional. I didn't know you were traditional. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Yes. Well, you're not going to be 14. Twelve is fine, and one day. Okay. All right. Let us continue. I'm lying. Okay. I'm glad. But what did you do professionally? <laughs> Yes, that's he's a bit annoying. Well, I'm so yes, it doesn't get better. I'm glad he's funny. That's funny. as long as they can make you laugh, you can keep them on. Yes, page four. That's very good, Sue. You're, you're, you're either a sociologist or a psychologist. Okay, very good. Page twenty-one. We'll do the another day. The and I have found the Please rise, page 22, fourth stanza, as we face the door through which the Sabbath queen will enter. O we the shalom atere pala, am bisim fahut sahayan, tofen munen am sibula, o we the shalom atere pala, am bisim fahut sahayan, <laughs> so, all right, please be seated. We'll continue on page 23. Ms. Morris, here Let's uh, do this responsibly on 23, left hand side in the English. It is good to acclaim Adonai, to sing your praise, exalted God, together to affirm your love each morning and your faithfulness each night. 
to the music of the lute and the melody of the harp. Your works, Adonai, make me glad. I sing with joy of your creation. How vast your works, Adonai. Your designs are beyond our grasp. Thoughtless cannot comprehend. The foolish cannot fathom this. The wicked may flourish, springing up like grass, but their doom is sealed. You are supreme forever. Your enemies, Adonai, your enemies shall perish. All the wicked shall crumble. But me you have greatly exalted. I am anointed with fragrant oil. I have seen the downfall of my foes. I have heard the despair of my attackers. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They shall grow tall like a cedar in Lebanon. Plant in the house of Adonai. They will thrive in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit even in old age. They shall be ever fresh and fragrant. To proclaim Adonai is just. My rock in whom there is no flaw. I love it when the uh, kids reading this at the Barbat Mitzvah would say flagrant. Okay, they shall be ever fresh and flagrant. Okay, you never know. All right, we can put the Sidurim aside. This week is Torah portion Shalat. I really like Shalat. It's got a lot of human drama. You'll see it in my essay. Uh, it means sin because the Israelites are very suspicious. As far as what kind of country is this? You're taking us to the land of Canaan or Canaan, and we need to know, uh, for example, are the uh, are the cities surrounded with high steep walls? They were actually uh, between three and six feet thick. I mean, you would hesitate about uh, attacking a city with six foot thick walls. What else? What else? Do they live out in the fields next to their farms, or do they tend to huddle in those walled cities? Well, walled cities was the way to go. Even though Jericho, interestingly, uh, that is, of course, as we remember from day camp, sitting on the bus, and Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, where we got bored. Joshua fought the battle, battle of Jericho, Jericho. I tell you, summer camp education. But the truth is the archaeologists have examined the ancient city of Jericho, there's a flourishing city of Jericho, it's an Arab uh, city, but the ancient city of Jericho does not show scorch marks. Generally, if you were going to conquer a city, you would try to set the thing on fire, which is really kind of a waste of time if it's mud walls or stone walls or whatever. There are no scorch marks on the ruins at the same time uh, during that period of time that the Israelites were supposed to be in the land. So what happened? You don't know. My favorite uh, conquered city is, is actually Ai. Okay, where do you live? Ai. No, I know where you live. Where do you live? Ai. It's Ai and Yud. It's wonderful. What happens at Ai is that the Israelites, once again, are fearful that they will not be able to conquer the city. So they use a stratagem. And the stratagem is that uh, several of them attack the city. Somehow or other, they get through the gates. And the Aiites, Aiens, uh, the I people chase all the Israelites out, and then another bunch of Israelites, a different party of Israelites, go in behind them and set the city on fire. And then the Iites see, oh my, our city is on fire. They go back, and the Israelites massacre them. Hey, what are you going to do? Um, and it, it goes on, it goes on. There's even one episode, I think it's the Gibeonites. Gibbon, Gibbon, Anshay Gibbon. Okay, the, the Gibeonites think it's better to, to make peace than to fight. So they put on old clothing. They take some old sheep and old goats. Everything's old. They take a couple of old walking sticks, and they go to see the Israelites. And the Israelites say, who are you? And why is your garb so shredded? And the Gibeonites say, oh, we come from a far distance, and we mean no harm. Please make peace with us. So the Israelites are very naive. They make peace with the Gibeonites. And then when they get to the city of Gibbon, they say, okay, let's destroy it. And the Gibeonites come out in the old clothing and say, no, no, you can't do that. We may put peace for the little bit. And that is uh, one example of a city that was not destroyed. Of course, we don't know where any of these things are or were. Okay. All right. So moving along. However, if you roll it back, the Israelites are first going to send 12 tribes. Every, uh, I'm not, not 12 tribes, 12 spies. Every spy, they said, there was a prince among them. There used to be a, uh, no, nope, we don't have it anymore. But there was a book on the shelf that talked about uh, how the spies were princes. But more importantly, it talked about the Israeli spying network as carried out in my friend's t-shirt, the Mossad, 
which is their CIA, okay, as opposed to uh, what's the other one? Shinbet, Shevet Bitachon, which is their FBI. Okay, so he chooses, Moses chooses 12 spies, each one a prince of the tribes. We get to read their names in the Torah portion. It's so cool. They have such names there Amishadai ben Chelon and uh, Uri ben Sipor, things like that. Jewish parents don't use these names anymore. You know, it's Moshe, Avram, Chaim. There's no more Suri Shaddai. Suri Shaddai means my uh, help, uh, my rock is, is the Almighty. Well, you, you don't want the kids to grow up to be tribes. No, that's they true. Very good. Yes, and also it's hard to fill out the grid when you're taking the SAT. <laughs> if your name is Chaim, it's easier than doing Suri Shaddai. Okay? Well, 12 spies go to the land of Canaan, and some of them go up, and some of them go down, and some of them go left and right, and they come back. And how do they prove that the land of Israel is a fruitful land? They bring back some fruit. And from this custom, we understand when I would go to my mother's house, and I would say, Ma, what's for dessert? And she would say, have some fruit, because it all goes back to the Israelites. A cluster of grapes, if you have seen the Carmel wine uh, seal, or if you've seen the seal, I don't know if they're still using it, or in tourists, you know, the people touring the country, it's a couple of guys holding a stick on their shoulders, and what's on the stick? Grapes. Really big grapes, grapes the size of watermelons, okay? Buck and a half a pound. All right, so a bunch of grapes, one pomegranate, okay, a pomegranate the size of a bowling ball, and a fig, one fig. That's it. That's all it takes. One fig. It was a big fig. Okay. Not a small fig. All right. If you're going to make an impression, you need a big fig. Okay. Uh, ten of the spies, however, say that the that we, the people in the land, are like giants and we would look like grasshoppers next to them. And their cities are walled and the, the walls go up to the sky. And uh, they really scare the you know what out of the Israelites. The only two who say, if God is with us, we will conquer, are Yehoshua ben Nun, that's Joshua, and Kaleb ben Yefune. Um, yes, Kaleb. But Kaleb, Kaleb, Kaleb is Kaleb, isn't it? It's in the room. Yes. Why would you name a person a dog? Dogs don't have such a great reputation as a dog. But he was a good guy. Kaleb ben Yefune. Yes. Oh, Kelev, so he has a big heart. Yes. Okay, that's good. Good drug. All right. And Kalev and Yoshua insist that the land can be conquered as God commanded. And what do the Israelites do? They say, yes, we will gird up our loins and conquer the land. Do they burst into tears or do they immediately go back to Egypt? Burst into tears. Burst into tears. Yes, indeed. A bunch of crybabies. They all cried that night. Now, this is significant in terms of the calendar. I don't understand how it works with dates here, but uh, that becomes error of Tishabah, the eve of Tishabah. And God says, you wept without cause. I'll give you something to cry about. Because they doubted God's word. So uh, they'd rather return to Egypt. And the irony is that this is the, the generation that didn't, come out of Egypt. They're the generation born in the wilderness. But God says, you're going to wander for 40 years, which will enable this generation to die. And so the Israelites say, uh-oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe it wasn't a good time for weeping. So instead, they decide to take matters into their own hands. They don't wait for God's permission. They storm a nearby hill, which is inhabited by Amalekites and Canaanites. Who wins? Them. <laughs> no, the Amalekites and Canaanites. Got it. Oh, so them that go either the, way? The two, the two bad guys. That was kind of safe college answer? <laughs> okay. The answer is either yes or no. Um, okay. No, the Amalekites and the Canaanites. We know the Amalekites, don't we? The Amalekites, they are the villain of A, Hanukkah, B, Purim, C, Passover. I thought you were shaking. You're nodding your head to everybody. Okay. All right. Yes. No, not Passover. No, Am Amalek was um, Amalek was the ancestor of Haman. Yes. Or Purim. Yes. It's all right. 
But then they had, they attacked the helpers, the, the rear of the uh, of the column when they were yes, the Amalekites. Yeah. But you know, there's always another Amalekite out there now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Oh, then God says, okay, we have some space between here and the end of the Torah portion. So I'm going to tell you more uh, offerings you can make for me. They talk about the Nesach. Nesach is when you pour out an offering to God. For example, I would say probably the first mention of this in the Torah is where um, um, Abraham, what's up, Abraham? Yaakov, Yaakov uh, pours out, he, he puts his head on a rock Okay, he's using the rock for a pillow, which is really a very poor choice of mattress. And uh, he dreams of the ladder of angels. The on-duty angels are going uh, down and the off-duty angels are going up. Well, uh, he appear, he gets up and he's amazed at all these angels and God himself speaking to him. And he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. He takes out his handy bottle of oil. Don't leave the house without your bottle of oil. Why was olive oil so valued? Why was it so precious? Burn stuff with it. Right? Sorry? Didn't they use it to light? They used it to light, yes. What else? Okay. They put it on their uh, bodies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I was going to say their salad, but <laughs> <laughs> suntan lotion. <laughs> and it was considered medicine because they didn't have anything else. They didn't have antibiotics, they didn't have band aid. Uh, but in this case, there were instances where they would pour out wine, oil, and meal. I, I could just see standing there with a barrel of oatmeal and pouring it on the altar. But apparently, this is what they did. Also, why do we call challah challah? Why is challah called challah? Challah. Oh, because it's not the loaf itself. It's the little pinch of dough that you pull off and you burn in the oven. Which always gives the house that lovely smell of burnt dough. Um, okay, because that's your offering. I, I knew this guy in Israel, and he was one of those holier than thou types. And we're sitting in the cafeteria eating whatever it was they were serving for food. And he would always take off a portion of his plate and scrape it onto a different plate. And that was his Levitical portion. Okay, that was his mass there, his tithe. But it had already been taken out in Israel, especially at a religious institution. They're very careful about those things. So you can see he was what, gilding the lily? He was kind of offering an offering that wasn't offering it. All right. So, and finally, God tells them about the fringes which go on the corners of the sacred garment, which are called, this is a tzitzit kala. So that shouldn't be too hard. All right, and that's uh, really, it does end on a positive note, but it's it's not, and the Haftorah is wonderful. Who's doing the Haftorah tomorrow? Okay, then I won't say a word, which is very hard to do. That's it, Shabbat Shalom, let's do the Borofu. Oh, okay. It's all right, I don't need to know. Okay, do you want to do it? Okay, do you want to do it? All right, that's my... We emptied the Asher Koa. Are, are you opening the ark for us, cousin? You're, you're, you seem to be closest. Page 28. You want the book? Be seated. Let's read the left hand paragraph, praise to you above the line on the left hand side of 28. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe, your word bringing the evening dusk. You open with wisdom the gates of dawn, design the day with wondrous skill. Set out the succession of seasons and arrange the stars in the sky according to your will. A denied Svaot, you create day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness away from light. Eternal God, your sovereignty shall forever embrace us. Praise to you, Adonai, for each evening's dust. <laughs> 
This is the place where we mention the names of those in the healing. Uh, anybody? Yes. I've got it right here. Yeah, I'm saving it. Rafoor Shalema. Rafoor Shalema. Rafoor Shalema. Anybody? Joel. Rafoor Shalema. Rafoor Shalema. Rafoor Shalema. Sorry? Yes, I am. Riley Mark. Rafoor Shalema. Uh, Marie Lipton Steen. Rafoor Shalema. Inez Pasher. Rafoor Shalema. And baby Eli Jacob. Rafoor Shalema. Yes. Yes, motion both Let's read the English uh, paragraph top left. Help us uh, its lie down in peace and awaken us again to our sovereign to life. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Guide us with your good counsel. Save us because of your mercy. Shield us from enemies and pestilence from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings, O God, who watches over us and delivers us, our gracious and merciful ruler, our our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Praise you, Adonai, who spreads the shelter of peace over us, over all his people Israel, over Jerusalem and the entire world. Prosalelu, 
Right, if you haven't finished, please continue. Otherwise, I'm on page 47. The left hand column because it includes the matriarchs. Or the Khatar and I, I don't know the Hotel Hail Hotel, or Hail Ramelate Sakhari Apu, or A Sara, the Hirif Kaila Hirafel, Elo Hilea, the Ela Gadogi, the Wena Rai, Nisha Mahim Baharet, they come the Page forty-eight, O Kaddish, the Yitral Vigarashim, the Rabbi, the Mahi Brach, 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 the Yitral Vigarashim, the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. As we wonder how many other uh, temple functions are delayed because uh, the rabbi or Hazard's daughter is uh, a woman. Okay. Kabri <laughs> 
Tikaro me va a ser bereishi. Y fui yo me tejina de mi So he untied me, All right, please remain standing. Page 51 is the Alenu. The ark must be open. Anybody who's open the ark, please. <laughs> Shri <laughs> Closed. If you don't say water Scottish, you may be seated. This is on 52. Yet the bow, yet the dash, and the rabbah, the Allah, he brought the rute, the amir, the fae, 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 Okay, and now we'll hear some well chosen words from our wonderful temple president. That was my husband. Oh, yeah.
Hey, for Jesus. Um, a good Shabbos, everyone. Welcome, Moshe. Welcome, Paul. So lovely to have you both with us. In case you didn't know it, you're in the sweetest show on the planet. This is the most wonderful community that you could ever uh, spend some time in. And we hope that you'll join us again. It's lovely to see you both here. Uh, for all of you here, I want to thank those of you who are at home as well for our tremendously successful brunch that we had on Sunday. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your support. The community always supports us. When our doors were closed through COVID, our community supported us. And we were able to not only stay open, but to flourish afterward. We're beginning the most important season of our temple. Right. And that is our membership drive, which begins on July 1st. You are all the lifeblood of temple. Without our community, we could not exist. And it is a joy for me on a personal level to be part of your temple family. It is a great joy um, for me as your temple president to serve in such a remarkable community. I, I am a very privileged person and I thank you all for that because your support means absolutely everything. And tomorrow is our very traditional Shabbat service that begins at 9 30. We're going to be celebrating our member Jack Bakerman's 94th birthday tomorrow. With uh, with a lovely, lovely kiddish, you are all welcome to come for services as well as a beautiful lunch that is going to be catered by Diamond Caterers. After um, our wonderful lunch, Rabbi has a class every Saturday um, after services, and tomorrow the subject will go back to the quiz where we're doing strange legal cases from Jewish history. Don't miss Rabbi's class. <laughs> a lot of Str participation. Strange legal cases in Jewish history. That sounds really interesting. I, I, I might stop and go my head. Rabbi is a marvelous scholar and teacher. He has classes on Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Zoom right now at 4 o'clock. Um, yes, I thought it. <laughs> and then at seven o'clock the same evening um, on courage events. Um, our cantor as well is a scholar and uh, he conducts the morning minions, which are on Zoom for now until we're uh, back in full swing um, at eight o'clock on Monday morning and at eight o'clock on Thursday morning. We are blessed with clergy who are scholars in their own right and marvelous, marvelous teachers. So we all benefit from that. We have a full schedule of events. Uh, Sunday evening is game night. And that is uh, has been designed by our own Doreen Christopher. There's a big following for game night. And it's a lot of fun. It is. So you can tune in. On Monday mornings at 10 o'clock, we have two events. One is a live event, a discussion group, a very lively discussion group that we can hear even when the doors are closed in the office. They're really going at it. And it's exciting, stimulating, and wonderful. And as well, on Zoom is aiding gracefully conducted by our own Lord of the Rent. At 11 o'clock, we have a canasta game going on. On Thursdays, we have a very lively uh, mahjong group going on as well. You all know that our brunch heralded in summer and was the last big event 
until my holiday. And Joni and I are already preparing for the holiday. So think about breakfast dinner with us, welcoming in the new year in our beautiful sanctuary. Think about the meaning of Yom Kippur with us and uh, beginning the year uh, with apologies to God for whatever transgressions we participate in for uh, uh, and, and to begin it to begin the year again, but also to hear Om Nidre, which is a very um, moving uh, and, and I think one of the most important parts of our uh, yearly cycle. Uh, we are here for each other for all life cycle events, happy and celebrating and sometimes sad, but together and together we celebrate and we comfort and we are always there for one another. Shabbat Shalom to each and every one. Are we in the big room tomorrow? No, we're in the big room tomorrow because it's, it's Big Jack's birthday. Yeah. Big Jack. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Yeah. 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 Serve it, is the service in the chair? The service is going to be in the, big, in the big sanctuary tomorrow to celebrate Jack's birthday. Okay. And tonight, our little old Shabbat, our coffee and cake are in the rotunda, which is also a, an extraordinarily special room. So if you've not been in it before, I, I'd love you to come in and see it and share a little uh, a little coffee, tea, or a nosh with us. So Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shabbat Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Shalom. 
Four children say it's in two, and the gratitude piece will say Thank you.